Microsoft's stock price has surged over 200% in the last five years, but are the shares about to go a little soft? In this video, I'll break down that massive return and give you a full analysis, including the Microsoft stock news that could move the market. We're talking investing in Microsoft today on Let's Talk Money. Beat Day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, these stars have aligned for Microsoft lately and shares have produced an annualized 27% return in the last five years. That's almost triple the 9.3% annual return on the broader market. In fact, even against some of these big growth names, Microsoft has outperformed. It's beaten the big fang stocks like Facebook and Apple over that five year period. In fact, only Netflix has produced a higher return and I'll be doing a full analysis of that stock in our next video, so don't miss that one. But is it too much of a good thing? Can Microsoft keep up that pace? Now, one analyst has a $163 price target for a 17% upside over the next year, while another one has shares at just 93 bucks a share or a potentially devastating 33% downside. So which is right? Let's look at what those analysts are watching, what matters most in Microsoft stock price, and then develop a stock price target of our own. First though, if there is a company that you want to see analyzed, let me know in the comments below and I'll put something together for you. Shares of Microsoft have been on fire with growth in its cloud business. That 27% annualized return over the last five years would be impressive for any company, but it's absolutely amazing considering the sheer size of Microsoft. This is a trillion dollar company growing revenue and earnings at 10% a year. Now one casualty of this huge growth has been the dividend yield. I'll get into the cash returns numbers, but, but even on that solid dividend growth, the payout just hasn't been able to keep up with the stock price. Remember that that dividend yield is just the dividend divided by the stock price. So even if the dividend is increasing, you can still get that lower return if the shares increase faster. And Microsoft has increased its dividend, but the share price has grown so much faster that the company is now only paying a 1.3% dividend yield versus that 2.5% back in 2014. So Microsoft doesn't quite qualify for our 2019 dividend portfolio because it fails that 3% yield requirement, but a total return of almost 30% a year would put that company on anyone's radar. Right now, shares are trading at 29 times the company's earnings. That's pretty lofty considering competitors like Cisco and the industry itself trades around 20 times last year's earnings. Uh, looking at this graphic on Microsoft's price to earnings history, the valuation on the shares has contributed to about half that overall stock price increase. Now we'll look at the company's earnings growth numbers, but think about what I just said. That price to earnings ratio represents investor enthusiasm in the stock, you know, how much investors are willing to pay for the company's earnings. That increase in sentiment has contributed to half of the Microsoft stock price increase over the last five years. So as we're looking through the company's business growth, you'll see that a lot of this positive sentiment is deserved. You know, Microsoft has really been firing on all cylinders in a lot of its business segments, but, but whenever you have that big chunk of a stock's return depending on investor sentiment, that PE ratio, it gets very hard to keep that up. You know, earnings are expected higher by 9.9% .9 over the next year to 522 a share. You can see that management has done a pretty good job of beating expectations in the past. That 13% earnings surprise last quarter was just over the average with Microsoft beating earnings estimates by about 11% on average over the last two years. Now sales are expected 9.8% higher to 138.2 billion over the next year. And this is really where I think we could see the company continue that strong earnings performance. Not only is Microsoft growing sales at a very strong clip, but it's also improving profitability as well and spinning off a huge amount of cash flow. So current expectations are for sales and earnings to grow at that same 10% rate. But if Microsoft is becoming more profitable, it should be able to grow earnings faster than its sales. We're here in the company's income statement, uh, the, one of the financial statements showing its sales and earnings. And remember, you want to look at the company's operating income. Now, I pointed this out a few weeks ago as one of the most important measures to compare stocks, taking that operating income against the revenue to find that company's profitability compared to its peers. Here we see that Microsoft made just over $35 billion last year in operating profits against $110 billion in sales. That's an operating margin of 32%, which is a huge improvement over the 25% margin it reported in 2017. By comparison, Cisco reported a 26% operating margin last year. So not only is Microsoft above its peers in this business profitability measure, but it's also improving on that profitability as well. 
That boost to earnings from profitability plus a share buyback program should make it easy to beat these earnings numbers. And I'm actually expecting profits closer to about 570 a share over the next year. Now let's look at where those sales and earnings are coming from and how Microsoft has been able to grow that stock price by over 27% a year over the last five. Uh, last quarter's Azure sales, so that's the company's cloud services product, they surprised to the upside with a 64% year-over-year growth, and this is really where the driver has been over the last few years. Microsoft announced its largest cloud services deal ever with a $2 billion contract with AT&T, and CEO Nandela ha has said that there is a line of sight to many more such deals in the future. Now, server products continues to do well, and the key is this, these margins, or that profitability is improving, so even as the company books solid growth, it's doing it more efficiently as well. Microsoft has successfully transitioned from that point-in-time sales model for, for its products to a subscription service, and is positioned for that cloud-based software-as-a-service future. Office and other software products have all transitioned to the cloud, and it's really a virtual monopoly on Office software, so, so customer adoption is all but guaranteed. That's gonna mean a steady stream of revenue, but at a higher margins over the next few years. Now here I'm forecasting a $1.87 dividend this year, and that's estimating an increase to 49 cents a share in the November payment. That would mean this year's dividend increase is around 8.7%, which is higher than the last couple of years, but smaller than what we saw in 2015 and 2016. Overall, the company has done an amazing job at increasing its cash payout to investors. It returned $7.7 billion to shareholders last quarter alone, with $4.2 billion in share repurchases and a $3.5 billion in dividends. With $134 billion in cash on the balance sheet and generating $30 billion a year in cash flow, that dividend is about as safe as it gets. What's a little harder to explain is the company's increase in debt over these last five years. Now, ultra-low interest rates have allowed Microsoft to tack on $60 billion in long-term debt, which isn't necessarily a problem, the interest expense is manageable and the company has increased its balance sheet cash by almost exactly the same amount. Microsoft has always been an acquisitive company, making some really big purchases in the past. I'm a little worried though that it's about to use a chunk of that cash for a big expensive acquisition and I'm not sure that it really needs it right now. The company's strength is that it already has so much of that traditional hardware on site at companies so it's already got its foot in the door and can convince the customers to, to transition into those new cloud services almost seamlessly you really get a sense that cloud is and cloud services is really a two-horse race between Microsoft and Amazon at this point. Uh, AWS bolted out of the gate and really surprised everyone, but Microsoft has used the, that legacy on-premise strength to really catch up and is probably a few lengths ahead right now. In fact, gaming is really the only soft point for the business last quarter and even into the foreseeable future. A fading interest in Fortnite and weak console sales contributed to a really disappointing revenue last quarter, and this is the one segment where Microsoft really hasn't proven its long-term dominance. Gaming is about 9% of total revenue and still growing double digits year over year, so, so not bad, but trailing the strength in those other segments. Now taking all this together, we can get a sense for a Microsoft stock price target and where the shares should go from here. First though, if you're liking the video, do me a favor and tap that thumbs up button below. Microsoft is heavily covered with 27 analysts providing estimates. Michael Turitz at Raymond James has the high target of $163 a share or about an 18% upside. John DeFucci at Jefferies has a low target with $93 a share and a 33% potential downside from here. Most of the analysts are expecting right around that $150 to $160 price range for the shares. Uh, that would put the stock at 27 times my $5.70 earnings estimate, uh, a little lower than the current PE, but still really high on that historical basis. Now, there's a lot of positivity around continued growth of Azure and that stronger profitability. Investors are, are no longer really worried about the sales cliff for legacy products like Office or some of the hardware, uh, but I get a sense that things are almost too good at Microsoft and the market knows it. The last few quarters have been really good and it feels like that best case scenario is already priced into the shares. Cloud and Azure will surely continue to grow but at a slower rate and any headline risk outside that perfect scenario is gonna test investor sentiment. I think that 150 to 160 price target among analysts is probably on the high side but still represents a solid 11% gain on the shares. I'm doubtful that the PE ratio can go beyond that 30 times level, so, so shares hit a ceiling at 170 and could potentially be stuck around $142 a share on any kind of bad news and, and maybe a 25 times PE multiple. Now, I don't see the shares as hugely overvalued though either, which actually is saying something considering most of the market is pretty expensive. Microsoft really does have something with its cloud growth and that's going to be propelling sales for a while. 
I definitely don't think you should expect 27% annual sales over the next five years, but, but I'd feel comfortable buying shares now for a good long-term position. Don't miss my analysis and shares of Apple and Ford, one of which could produce a 25% upside by clicking on the videos to the right. Join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and the bell notification.